Hi, I'm Andy from Backcountry Access, and we're talking probing 101 now. Now, an avalanche transceiver is used to get you in the general vicinity of an avalanche victim. The probe is used to identify the exact burial depth and location of that victim. It's also a useful tool when probing for somebody that's not wearing an avalanche transceiver. In this video, we're gonna talk about three different uses of your avalanche probe. One, using it in a companion rescue situation where the victim is wearing an avalanche transceiver. Two, using it in a spot probing situation where the avalanche victim doesn't have a transceiver on and you're probing likely burial areas. And three, using your probe in an organized probe line. An organized probe line involves a lot of manpower and generally the victim is not wearing an avalanche transceiver when those occur either. In most avalanche rescues, shoveling is the most time consuming and demanding phase. So by learning to probe properly in an efficient and effective manner, you can keep the shoveling to a minimum. We recommend practicing with your avalanche transceiver, your probe and shovel as frequently as you can, because who knows, these techniques might save a life out there someday. It's important to take time to practice deploying your avalanche probe. Simply hold the probe in your hands and toss the segments away from your body while simultaneously pulling the stealth quick lock tension system to assemble. BCA avalanche probes come standard with one and five centimeter increments, so the probe can be used for collecting accurate observations in snow profiles as well as avalanche rescue. All BCA probes are marked with 150, 200, and 250 centimeter marks for organized probe lines. Once you've identified the lowest distance reading using an avalanche transceiver, it's time to start probing. In some cases, you will not have a positive strike on your first attempt. Continue to probe perpendicular to the slope in concentric circles until you have a positive strike. If you still don't have a positive strike after completing three concentric circles, get your avalanche transceiver back out and see if you can find an even lower distance reading. How do you know when you have a positive strike? Well, it'll feel a little bit squishy and softer than your previous attempts. One way to confirm a positive strike is to leave the probe in place and see if the depth markings on the probe correspond to the distance readings on your transceiver. Got a positive strike, 1.5 meters down. Another option is to leave the probe in place and use other probes to see if they go deeper. In some scenarios, victims may be buried so deep that they cannot be reached with a probe. You'll know this because the lowest distance reading on your transceiver will most likely be greater than two and a half meters and you won't feel anything soft and squishy. Surviving a burial this deep is unlikely, but it has happened, so be prepared. The trick is to dig down a meter at a time, then bracket and probe again until you're close enough to strike the victim. In burials this deep, your lowest distance reading might not be obvious. So define the boundaries where your numbers jump up and center the dig area between these points. Once you strike the victim with your probe, then start digging just downhill of the probe strike using strategic shoveling methods. Spot probing is used to search for a victim that's not wearing an avalanche transceiver. Begin probing likely burial areas, like above trees and rocks, around snowmobiles or gear on the surface, and the toe of the debris pile. Probe approximately one and a half meters deep to cover more ground. You have a greater chance of recovering a live victim by probing a greater surface area, not necessarily deeper. The third probing technique we are going to discuss is organized probing. Organized probing is usually performed by a third party when no one is available for a companion rescue or if the companion rescue has failed. It's best to start downhill and move up. The first technique used in organized probing is the coarse probe method. Searchers line up wrist to wrist and probe left, center, and right with the probe strike separated by 50 centimeters. Once completed, searchers will take one step forward and repeat until the debris field and likely burial areas have been covered. If searchers are unable to get a positive strike using the coarse probe method, move to the fine probe method and conduct another full pass through the debris and likely burial areas. In the fine probe method, 
Searchers line up elbow to shoulder and probe left, center, and right. But this time your probe strikes are separated by 25 centimeters and rescuers probe to a deeper burial depth of around two and a half meters. Once completed, searchers will take one small step forward, about 25 centimeters, and repeat. Probe lines are a last resort, require lots of manpower, and rarely result in a live recovery. Once you have a positive strike, now comes the hard part, shoveling. To learn how to properly excavate a victim, see our Shoveling 101 video, available at backcountryaccess.com videos. Stay safe out there.